Yes, yes, yes. It's that time again. Time for another episode of On Top and Hot with your host, John Zadar. This is the last day of August. It is August 31st, Wednesday. Now, what we like to do on this show is we like to focus in on penny stocks and OTC stocks. We're looking for stocks that got something going. Right there, you've got lots of news for the OTC market. That's news I've looked at over the last four days. You got the newest news at the bottom, the oldest news is up at the top, and it's good news. These are activities that the company's involved with. No financials, no public offerings, nothing like that. But we do look at penny stocks as well. Now, those are all penny stocks, but a penny stock can be anything up to $5. And you're going to find lots of those on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. So we could easily be looking at those. And they're great stocks to consider. Penny stocks on the major exchanges are free to trade. I got to pay $14 round trip on every OTC stock I trade. So yeah, I'm intrigued by penny stocks on the major exchanges. Now, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website where you can always find me doing my research on an OTC stock. For one reason, it is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. How great is that? They're never outdated. Can you mention any other site like that? So I love this site. Saves me a lot of time. Saves me a lot of hassle. I'm sure it'll do the same thing for you as well. So let's take a look at how our OTC market fared today. It looks like a carbon copy of yesterday. Our dollar volume hasn't changed, 1.6 billion. Our average is 2.1. We haven't been there in over a week. Share volume, I don't remember if it was 0.3 or 4 yesterday, but this is pretty much in the same zone. The good news is we didn't fall under 10 billion. There's the point. We don't want to get under 10 billion. Stay here for a while. That's okay. Hopefully, we'll get some more coming here soon. Trades. Same old, same old. We're just hanging around 250,000. We're not getting far from that. So as I said, pretty much a carbon copy of what we did yesterday. So if it was a chart, we're going sideways. Now I've got some interesting stocks to share with you today. I think you're going to recognize some of them. Some of them you're not, but I think you should be looking at all of them. Let's see what I got. First stock we're taking a look at had a kick-ass day today. No doubt about that. This is sticker PFSF Pacific Software. I have never heard of this company before. She didn't have any news come out today, but she did have a couple of filings. And if you'll notice over here, she's on the pink limited information tier, which means they are late on one or more of their filings. So that in itself is a big deal. But inside one of those filings was some great information. Now, I don't know for fact, but I'm thinking that's why this stock was running today. She finished the day at seven cents with 250% gains. Folks, she was well over 600% gains earlier today. She does have a transfer agent verified, but we don't have a verified profile. They're both important. We would like to see them. So what does PFSF do? Well, they tell us here that they're in the restaurant business. And by looking at their financials, that's what I see. They've been buying up all these restaurants in Connecticut, Massachusetts, Georgia, and that's what they're doing. They're running restaurants, making money doing it. So what was the relative volume today around this company? <laughs> well, that explains why I've never heard of this company. She's only doing 167 shares a day. And today she did about a quarter million. It's not a huge number, but it is a huge jump. And I think she did about 167 trades today. Share structure. What do we got over here for our float? All right, it says we have 6 million in our float, 19 million outstanding, and almost a billion in the authorized shares. Wow, we got a nice float here, folks, 6 million. Financials, what sort of money is this company making? Woo! Things took a jump, didn't they? They went from nothing to 20,000. I know that's thousands because there's three zeros here I got to put behind all these numbers. And then put those three zeros behind there. And that is $3.3 million they did at the end of last year. So they have been jumping at leaps and bounds for sure. And they got to keep 2.5 million of that. Not bad. Let's look at their quarterly. Let's see what's going on here recently. All right, the first three months, they did almost a million dollars. Not bad at all. Though they didn't get to keep much of that. No, they had to give away two-thirds. Not quite sure what happened there. But we see that they are making money. All right, disclosures. Now, remember I told you they're pink limited. Now, as a matter of fact, I've already got this highlighted over here so that you can see it. Because they're pink limited, they are late on one or more of their filings. So we're looking for those filings to be caught up. So we see here, this is the period for which they're filing. 
there's the end of the year, there's March, right? From 12 to three, every three months we should see these. There is a quarterly report, they were gonna be late, then they got it in. They told us here, for Junes, they were gonna be late, they told us that on the 15th, and then they filed here on the 31st. That is up to date, that is everything we need here. We don't need an attorney letter because those only go out with annual reports. So if this is accepted and it came in today and it only takes two or three days for them to look at them, see if they're all okay, if that's right, then this should go back up to pink. That in itself is exciting news. Then I jumped into that quarterly report just to see what they've been doing because they have been making money, right? So this is all the restaurants that they have been buying here recently and currently own. Most of them are in Connecticut. They've got one in Georgia, one in Massachusetts. Now, here's what's interesting. We just saw a float over here. Let's jump back there. What was our float that they said? Six million. Held in DC, 1.2 million. A lot of people think that's the float. Then they tell us a float down here of 50,000. Well, which number is it? Well, I always go by the unrestricted shares. An unrestricted share, by definition, are shares that are allowed on the open market. Well, that's what a float is. So I presume it is 6,000, but look here. They tell us here the number of shares in the public float is 165,000. Call it 166, as of June 30th. Now, unless there's been some big change between June and now, there are only 165,000 shares in this float, not 6 million, which is a great float. 6 million is outstanding, but this is 165,000 shares. That is so, so low that I just, I, I, I can't make a face to describe it. Close enough. Now, the what I did want to show you, uh, I'm froze here. Let me see if I can get this thing moving. All the way down here, we've got our financials. Bink, right there. All right, we're not gonna go into this deep. I just wanna flash a couple numbers here at you. Their assets, as of September last year, they had 3.4. As of June of this year, they had 5.3. It's a nice jump, but it's it's nothing super incredible, right? But look at their revenues, woohoo. Now this is from the six month period last year compared to this year. This year, they did $17 million in the last six months. That's what it says right there. We have all the digits. We don't have to add any zeros. And last year, at the same time, they were doing a half million loss. So we are up like 18 million from last year. That is a huge jump in revenues. Now there's a lot of other numbers here that have to be taken into consideration. But the fact that they're generating that kind of money, that is big. Now, let me show you what the charts look like. You want to talk about big. We had a huge jump today. So that is a six-month, four-hour chart for PFSF. And we're doing our charting on my free trading platform. This is Thinkorswim. You need one? Just go on over to TD Ameritrade. Sign up for the free trading account. Keep your account open. I mean, you can use this anytime you like. So remember, this stock hasn't got a lot of volume. Today we had a lot of volume, about a quarter million shares. Normally she's doing 167 shares a day, if she's trading at all. Doesn't look like she has a lot of trading days. This is six months. And back here in February, we had a high of $1.10. And here in June, it fell all the way to double zero one two. I know that's over 10,000%. That may be a 100,000% drop. I don't know. She has gone sideways without a whole lot of activity until today. Today, she decided to jump on those filings and maybe those revenues. Technicals really don't look like anything I want to boast about. I don't see anything here to say looks good. Sorry to say. And you would think it would. 20-day, one-hour view. Well, there you go, folks. You can see there's not a lot of activity over the last 20 days. One, two, three days. Three days is all the trading we've had. And most of that was today. This was a big trading day for her. Technicals still don't look like anything I would brag about. I don't see anything here I even want to point out except that our MACD is getting close to the signal line. That's about it. Five day, five minute. Give us some activity. All right. So we still got our three days here. Now this started to move at what time? 10 after 10. Now right there is your drop, right? Right there is your drop at five minutes after 10. 
I always say at 10, 10 10.05, look for a small dip or a huge drop. 10, 10 10.05 is when the market hesitates and it's deciding what it's going to do. Not every stock, but a lot of them, most of them. And this one took a drop at 10.05 and then it made a decision what it was going to do. It says, I'm going to the mountain. And it took off, folks. And it went here from, well, if you get rid of that zero, call that 17, it went up to 150. 17 to 150 that's a 700 800 percent gain somewhere in there and she quit climbing at 12 30. Boop, that lunch whistle went off and everybody ran home and we lost well it went from 150 back down to 75 so basically you lost 50 percent of all your gains right there and that's where she stopped and we got 250 percent gains for the day which isn't bad at all for not having a serious catalyst what i see is she's going to be going pink she got her filings in we're just waiting for them to be accepted and it looks like a huge increase in revenues which is always a good thing i would dive into those financials to see more about those uh technicals here well at least our ppo is above the pink it is starting to dip with this right now now if it goes pink we may see another bounce out of this and keep in mind what did we find a float of a hundred and sixty five thousand now we originally thought it was six million at least i did i always use the uh unrestricted shares but they said in their financials it was 165,000, which may have a lot to do with why this was running on only a quarter million shares, which is 15 times the float. So she sold 15 times as many shares as she's actually got available on the market. That's the way it looks. So I keep my eye on this just because of the math. It doesn't take a lot of volume to get that little tiny float to jump. So keep your eyes on this, folks. All right, folks, we're going to do something a little different here. We're going to be looking at a stock that is in the triple zeros. We don't normally do that, do we? This is sticker BYOC, Beyond Commerce. Now, I normally don't look at trip zero stocks simply because they don't move fast enough. They don't rise fast enough. You could literally do a billion shares in a day and then not go anywhere. Just go straight across the board. And that's not going to intrigue anybody. Well, today, this stock jumped 100%. Now, if you were at triple zero one and went to triple zero two, that's 100%, but that don't intrigue me. This was at triple zero three and jumped to triple zero six. Now on the trip chart, that's a big deal, but that's not the only thing that caught my eye. It was getting a lot of trades. They were just rolling in. And I think at the end of the day, we had over 1,200 trades on this stock. I got to figure that's at least a thousand people. And wait till you get a view at the share volume today. Woohoo! So she is on the pink tier. She's current. And look, she's got a verified profile and a transfer agent. She's not only pink, she's a triple zero. And she's got all this going for her. So she looks pretty good. So what does BYOC do? Well, they are into big data. They tell us that Beyond Commerce is a Nevada corporation that operates as a holding company. And they are focused on acquiring big data companies in the business to business internet marketing technology service and the whole point is to get this data so they can do cross-selling so they can bring all this information together and make more money now the deal that they're closing here in September has nothing to do with big data as a matter of fact it has to do with the EVs electric vehicles totally a completely different direction in operation now I'm not saying there's not going to be any synergies between their big data in the EV market I just don't know what they are. So what was the relative volume around the company today? It was killing it, folks. She is normally doing 43 million shares. Today she did 2.5 billion. 2.5 billion, over a thousand people trading it, a deal around the corner. You need to be looking at this, folks. The surge is coming. You can see the froth on the shore. What is the share structure on this company? E, yeah, it's not good. We have 15.4 billion shares in the float. Nothing more to be said about that. Financials for this trip zero. Ooh, I'm impressed. Look at this, folks. Over the last three years, even through COVID, they have maintained doing at least $4 million. And they're getting most of that money to keep in profit. What about quarterly? They should be doing about a million dollars a quarter, right on the money. 
Each quarter, they're doing a million dollars, getting to keep about three quarters of it. So this triple zero stock is making money. Pretty steady, too. How about their disclosures? I don't think we got anything new over here. Uh, 2019 and the 12th. Nope, we got nothing new over here. So let's jump on over to that news. So this company here, they acquired at the end of July. This is EG Insight. It's another big data company. So it's not like they've quit doing what they've been doing. They're just adding to it. And then you had news back on the 13th of July. Beyond Commerce executes definitive agreement to acquire Electric Bill. Now I got all my information actually over here at Twitter. They kind of sum it all up. Uh, BYOC is closing a deal with the company called Electric Built. They're going to change their name. They're going to change their ticker. They tell us in this news press that Beyond Commerce, a provider of business-to-business -business internet marketing analytic technologies and services, is pleased to announce the signing of a definitive agreement to acquire Electric Built headquartered in Inglewood, California. The acquisition initially announced as a letter of intent on April 12th provides Beyond Commerce exclusive access to Electric Belt's commercial business, know-how, and business connections and operations. The acquisition is expected to close by September 20th. So you've got three weeks before this closes and she's starting to run now at the triple zero six point. You may want to look at this. Let's go take a look at that chart. There you go. Six month, four hour chart for BYOC. She has been in the triple zero price the entire time. And what you get are these barcodes, this picket fence, right? It's just bouncing between two numbers the entire time. She has been going sideways, dropping a little here and a little there. She actually got on top of the 200, but she wasn't doing anything about it. And then today, Without any serious catalyst, just a bunch of tweets talking about this deal closing in September, boom, she took off. And we are up here again at her high right there, triple zero six. So we're looking to break this hard resistance right now. Our technicals are very strong, as you would imagine. 20 day, one hour isn't going to look a whole lot different. You got your bounces up and down and your big push right here. And you can see how many times she has hit her head. Like I said, a very strong resistance. But look at our technicals. We're in the overbought. Our MACD is screaming to the ceiling, just like our PPO. These two are cousins. They're in agreement. And it looks like our trend is continuing. We have one solid line that hasn't changed direction. So everything looks good. And our SMAs look strong. Volume was strong, but it did peter out a little bit. But it looks like it was actually coming back. So let's see what we got on that five day, five minute. All right, so she took a jump real quick at the beginning of the day. She hit that in what, less than 10 minutes? Less than five minutes. Five minutes she hit up here, and then she just spent the rest of the day going boing, 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 all the way across the board. Now, she could sit up here and wait for this 200-day SMA to come up to her, and once it bumps her in the butt, jump up again. All I'm saying is the stock has got a lot of people watching it right now. There were a ton of shares moved today. There's a lot of attention being given to this company because they have an imminent deal about ready to close with an EV company. Of course, it needs more due diligence, but I've got your curiosity peaked, don't I? Now, I'm betting you're familiar with this company. This is ticker T-O-N-R, Toner. This is Toner One World Holdings, Inc. Boy, about a year ago, she was ripping up the charts. Really, some huge surges. And today, she started to move. But compared to those surges, this isn't nothing. But I figured, with the volume coming in and the way she used to move, we may want to put our eyes on this. So she finished the day at 0017 with about 42% gains. She's on the pink limited tier, just like that other company. So she is late on one or more of her filings. And that's really what this is all about. She put out some filings and it looks like she could be going pink anytime now. She does have those two green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. That looks good. But they tell us she's a shell risk. 
Now this is kind of interesting because to be a shell risk, you have to have a business and just not reporting any revenues. You're not making any money, but you actually do have a business. Now they tell us down here that Toner One World Holdings is an emerging growth company that is expanding into the world of digital commerce initiatives and finance, IP licensing, cryptocurrency, and high value NFTs. However, when I look at the most current financial that just came out, under business description, it says no operations. Under revenues, it says zero. Under assets, there is nothing there. And under liabilities, about 11 million. So to me, it looks more like a shell company than a shell risk. I don't see the business, but maybe they've got plans. Maybe they too have a news press from a couple months ago about something that's going to happen here in the near future. I don't know. I haven't done a deep dive. So some more due diligence wouldn't hurt. So what was the relative volume today? She normally does $131 million, which is pretty good. Today she did more than double that at about $300 million. Share structure. Well... We got a ton of shares, a ton. Not as bad as the one, but still pretty high. 4.5 billion shares. Financials, well, being a shell risk, we're not gonna see anything over here. It's gonna be zip on all of the board. There you go, absolutely nothing. And financials, this is where we get most of our information from. She is pink limited. She is late on one or more of her financials. We can see here on the 23rd of this month, which was over a week ago, she put in two quarterlies, one for March and one for June. But I can see that June's was already put in and so was March's. But those were put in this month as well. So they put them in, they were late and they weren't accepted. They had to amend them and they've been put in again. Now we're waiting. That's all we're doing is we're waiting and once they are accepted, that will go to pink current. Now, is that enough to get her to rip and run? I really don't know, but she's already moving today. Let's go take a look at that chart, and I'll show you what sort of running this stock does when it gets volume, even with 4.5 billion shares. This is Toner, ticker T-O-N-R. That is a six-month, four-hour chart. We got a high bubble back here of one cent and a low bubble of triple zero four. What a drop. You can see our volume has been getting stronger and stronger and we have just broke the 200. We actually went through a test period here and are pushing away from it very strong. We've looked at this before. That's what that blue line is. It reminds me of when we looked at something. And look at this, folks. We looked at that at the right time. I can't remember what had us looking at it, but boy, was that good timing. She started to rise just a little bit the next day and then tore it up over the next week. She went from uh, 001 up to 004. That is a 400% gain. But check this out. I'm going to kick this out a year. So there's your 400% gain. There is our little itty bitty gain. And look at that, folks. A year ago, September, she was at 0004, the same low we just hit here recently. And for a month, she was running and got all the way up here to 1.75 cents. That is over 3,000% gains. Let's come on down to that 20-day, one-hour view. All right, she was under the 50 here, actually hit a low bubble. There's your triple zero four. She's bounced off that slowly over many days, has been working her way across the 200 and very casually working her way up. And over the last three days, she has caught some momentum without any new news. And the filings came out on the 23rd. So I guess people are just speculating now. Our technicals, really good. Everything looks hot. We do see a wee bit of pullback here on the RSI and on the MACD. That's probably the high bubble pulling back. We'll probably see that on the five day, five minute. Yep, there you go. High bubble and your pullback. So she was going sideways for a few days under the 200, broke it three days ago and has been working her way up. She's not in a big hurry. It has been slow and steady. Yesterday was just sideways. Today has been lots of growth. The SMAs look pretty good right now. Uh, volume is average. There's nothing great there. And the technicals look mixed. Actually looks like she's about ready to go sideways some more. 
But the point is, even with this huge float of 4.5 billion, when this thing wants to run, it runs. And I don't know how important it's gonna be when it goes current. May be a big deal to the followers and the investors. Maybe some news follows it, but I would keep my eye on Toner. You've seen how she likes to run. If she does it again, wouldn't you like to be on board? If you still got an appetite, I still got a few more stocks I can share with you. Now we can't zoom in on these, we just haven't got enough time, but these were on my list to share with you, but I had to narrow it down to just three, right? But rather than waste my DD and waste an opportunity for you, I'm gonna give you the ticker and the catalyst for what caught my eye. We got three stocks here. First one we're looking at is Viper, ticker VPER, Viper Networks Inc. Finished the day at 0014 with 40% gains. Has a huge float, 4.8 billion. They had a news press come out today about a joint venture with three companies, Viper Networks and Great Seas Holdings, Earthwind Technologies, and General Turbo announce a joint venture and future U.S. manufacturing agreement. They are going to be manufacturing wind turbines, solar fields, and magnetic generation drives. Second stock, RXMD, Progressive Care, finished the day just over three cents with over 42% gains. Floats a wee bit better. <laughs> We're down here at 475 million shares. Now this company also had news come out today. They tell us about two investments that were made into them. Between the two investments, they just had an aggregate amount of $8.3 million given to them. And the third and final ticker we're looking at is GEGI, -E Genesis Electronics Group. Finished the day at .0175, just under two cents, with 25% gains. And they too have a huge float. What is it with these big floats? 1.1 billion. Now, as you can see, they are pink limited. They are late on one or more of their filings, and that's what this is all about, them going pink current. They had a problem with their June filings. First, they were late. Then they filed them on the 16th, about two weeks ago. Didn't work. Had to refile them, a revised version. That was put in two days ago. So we're expecting, hoping, that this gets accepted and she goes pink current and maybe gets some run. So what do you think of those three? I know, we got to wait for things to finish up. But each one has got some potential. PFSF, they're about ready to go current and they had a huge revenue jump from minus a half a million last year to $17 million this year. That is a huge, huge jump. Then BYOC, who doesn't love a good acquisition or merger? They're getting into that electric car business. That's gonna be sometime in September. And then we got Toner. Hasn't got a lot going on with it, except she likes to run when she runs, and she looks like she's about ready to go current too. So we're gonna keep our eye on that one as well. Now, most of this I didn't find by doing research. It was just seeing why something was running and diving into it and putting two to two together. That's sometimes what it takes. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.